Mm. Where am I? Hey guys, uh, not sure if you can really tell because I always look and sound like I'm sick, but yeah, I'm actually sick this time. So uh, let's see if we can get through this video before I keel over and die. Oh no, it's too late. <laughs> Okay, so this is a new series I want to start doing between the episodes of Bad Movie Touch where I talk about some movies that may not be bad. For those of you who don't know, I used to make a lot of film reviews on this channel. I think I actually started to get a bit of a following, but then I uh, changed my channel name. And also, I think I hadn't posted in over like a year, so uh, it kind of messed everything up, you know. But I do still love to talk about movies, and I still see a lot of movies, and I like to give my thoughts on them. Rather than just dedicate an entire video to one movie, movie review, I thought it best to just sort of lump them all together because that's also just a good way to have a steady, consistent upload schedule as well. So that's what this show is. Welcome to Bi-Weekly bi Roundup. So this is going to be majorly backed up here, but uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Black Panther. Uh, so I saw this well over two weeks ago, or, or did I, I saw it opening night. When did it come out? I, I have a very bad perception of time now. That could have been two days ago or 14 years. So Black Panther is the latest edition in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know if you've heard of it, it's pretty underground. I'm just gonna sort of burn through this one real quick because it came out so long ago. I really, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I grew up reading Marvel comics. I never thought we'd be here because... Do you remember Daredevil? God, that was fucking horrible. And I don't think that's like nostalgia blinders or anything, because I also grew up with DC Comics, and I am not talking about Suicide Squall again. So I don't really think nostalgia matters, is what I'm saying. Go ahead, say I'm a Marvel fanboy. Uh, that's that's fine, too. I mean, I, I loved Iron Fist. Sorry, buddy. It's like the best comedy show on Netflix, so count that against me. So yeah, performances. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is great in this movie. I totally bought him as this kingly regal figure, and it was interesting to see his journey and uh, how they went about all that, and it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with him later on in this universe. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is is great. The top tier Marvel villain, if if not at the top. He, he, did, a, he did a fantastic job and really brought a lot of weight to like a villain's motivations and stuff. It, it didn't feel like the standard standard I'm gonna blow up the world by shooting a laser into the sky it, it wasn't that so uh so good, good on you Michael B. Jordan we can finally stop talking about this forever now Letitia Wright is a breakout star here she's she's amazing and Martin Freeman is enjoyable as always oh shit this is footage from The Hobbit and on top of that they switched up a lot of the MCU's lesser elements remember when all the movies were kind of an ugly looking and they didn't really like color correct their images that well and all the music was really boring like oh, all those things you keep seeing video essays for yeah, yeah, remember when they did all that? Well, uh, what a surprise that the colors in this are great, and it leads to some great looking shots and cinematography. And the music by Kendrick Lamar and Ludwig G uh, Gur uh, Garana Soda is pretty sweet. Uh oh, and of course, Andy Serkis talking about his mixtape and then impromptu singing What is Love while he's strapped to a chair is just. I, I love it. Criticisms, yeah, a, a lot of the CGI was, uh, was pretty rough. Not enough that it ever really took me out of it. There's like there's like a million things on, on screen at all times. It's, it's it's It stands to reason that a few of them aren't going to look that great. But the what are those joke made me squirm in my seat a little bit, if I'm being honest. I think a few narrative turns were a bit predictable, and I know it's I know it's a PG-13 release, but seeing a throat slitting with no blood is just very odd. Overall, yeah, I really liked it. I think it's definitely one of the best in the franchise, and I'm really excited to see what they uh, build off of in the next one and the future Marvel movies. I don't really like giving ratings anymore. I'll just list what I put on IMDb at the bottom of the screen, and, and there you go. Got your summation. Moving on. So after that, the next movie I went out to see was A Wrinkle in Time, and uh, ooh, um, oh boy. Oh boy. This is directed by Ava DuVernay, who uh, made Selma, a movie I thought was really great, and I was really excited to see where she went from there. She was actually being circled to direct Black Panther before Marvel went with Coogler, and uh, maybe it's good that she didn't. 
direct Black Panther? That's a little much. The things that work in this movie, I think, work because of her direction. But, uh... Oh. The performances are good for the most part, save for this one little kid who, uh, um... Listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna insult a kid for that. He's so bad. I, I'm sorry. This, this delivery is terrible. And yeah, that there's some nice visuals, but um, a lot of it implements some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in my life. Just, just very simple, basic things that you have to keep in mind. They seem to have done with no regard in this movie. Like a lot of eye lines don't match up at all. We needed. Giant Oprah. I, I feel like this is that movie that a lot of kids are really going to enjoy when they're young and then they're gonna revisit it as an adult and be like, ooh, uh, this, uh, this might not have been as good as I remembered. Uh, but that's just it. I think the target audience will enjoy it just fine. All the stuff that bothered me won't bother them and uh, I doubt it bothers Disney earlier, I'm sure. I'm sure they don't care that a 23-year-old man didn't care for their latest children's blockbuster. Uh, there you go. If, if you have kids, I'd say take them to this one. Uh, otherwise, uh, probably skip it. Uh, Pacific Rim generic subtitle. I'm pretty sure I saw that. Uh, the most movie movie to ever movie. Whereas the first film carried a lot of style and weight, and, and not just weight in like terms of what was going on with the characters and the world building and all that stuff, but with the robots and the way they fought too. That was one of the big things. This one has just enough explosions and colors and action to keep you entertained throughout, but I feel like the second you leave, you immediately forget about it. Uh, well, I forgot almost everything. I remember that John Boyega was very charismatic as usual, and I remember that somebody wrote the worst possible follow-up for Charlie Day. How dare you make Charlie Day the worst part of a movie? It, it makes sense the way they set it up in the movie, but it's horribly handled. It ruins a character. It's just... Uh, I, don't, I don't even have that much to say about it. What could I say? What was there to talk about? The, talk about the scene where things went boom and the robots ran at each other at the speed of fighter jets? Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's real interesting. Uh, I'd say skip this one, maybe wait till it comes to VOD, because uh, honestly, this is not worth the price of a, of a movie ticket. It's just too... Nothing. I I'm done. I don't even care anymore. We're moving on. Uh, I saw Death Wish. And it really touched me, apparently, because now I have a death wish. They told me Bruce Willis was in this movie. Where? I didn't see him. I just saw this emotionless Eggman. Ice cream man. Can't walk to school if you don't work for him. Who are you? Yeah, don't. Just, just don't. It's... It's such bad taste. I saw Love, Simon. That was fine. I, I don't know how people feel about Nick Robinson, but I really like him. I first saw him back in Kings of Summer, and that's a that's a really enjoyable coming-of-age comedy if you haven't seen that one, so check that out. Uh, I think this will be a very important film to a lot of people who don't see themselves represented in traditional media, and it seems like we're finally in the age where that's changing and the tide is turning, and that's awesome. Whoever the fuck wrote that article, like, do we really need Love, Simon? Shut the fuck up. Do we need any movie? Let, let people enjoy something. It feels like a lot of these coming-of-age movies just share the same perspective over and over again. It's clearly not a universal experience for someone across the board. So, so getting new perspectives in there, that's interesting, and it leads to some more interesting films. And I'd say my biggest complaint with Love, Simon is that it... It sticks to formula a little too much, like it, it kind of hits the coming-of-age beats, and uh, I don't know, I, w I wish that was just like a little more creatively done, or maybe they just uh, switched it up, because you can tell where a lot of things are going, and I think that, that sort of took me out of it, but uh, other than that, I really don't have much to say. Uh, I really like the way it's shot. The performances are all very good, especially, uh, like I said, from Nick Robinson. Everybody pretty much brings their A-game, and it really shows. This may not be like rewriting the book or, or changing the rules of the genre or anything, but it's still a very enjoyable movie. I personally don't know if I'll ever see it again, but I am very glad that I did see it, and I think this will be a very important movie for a lot of people, and I think that's the magic of movie making. Sherlock Gnomes was great. Um, he's easily best, best movie of the year. I mean, I, I haven't seen it, but... Uh, Title, concept, casting, trailer, all 10 out of 10, so go see that one. And the last movie we're going to talk about is the latest Spielberg picture, The Post. What? There's a... There's a more... There's a more recent one. Oh, what's that about? Oh, the... Uh... Oh, wait, I saw that, I think. Oh, yeah, it's totally weird how I already completely forgot about it. Hmm. Okay, so I don't have a real attachment to this. I never read the book. I have a few friends who read the book, and they tend to say the same thing about it. So, outside from Spielberg, I didn't have a real reason to look forward to this, and my friends who have read the book who have seen it have told me that they basically reworked the timeline and the structure and the whole basic setup of the book, which is good, because some of the stuff in those pages is just... Wow. 
It feels like it was written by whatever pop culture robot is programmed to write Big Bang Theory episodes. No, but in reality, it was, it was written by a man who wrote this poem. Ew. What's interesting is that Ernest Cline, the author of the book, was actually one of the head writers on the movie. So it's interesting to see an author go back through his work and sort of rework his story to make it work for a new medium. I, I thought that was pretty interesting, so props to you, Ernest. Um, it's fun for the most part. The references don't beat you over the head, like, all the time. Final Battle's pretty cool. The CGI is on screen. Uh, the characters definitely exist, that's for sure. I think Mark Rylance's character, the creator of the, the virtual reality world, I think he was really the only one that struck me as having a unique and interesting personality. Uh, everybody else and everything else really is, is just kind of serviceable. Uh, I'm glad Spielberg got his hands on it because in the hands of anybody else this probably would have been a dumpster fire, but Spielberg manages to inject just enough of that fun and that sort of that great adventure feeling of his earlier films. He, he, def he obviously knows what he's doing. And uh, he really elevates this. Uh, not to the point where I feel I ever need to uh, watch it again or think about it again or just even remember that it exists, really. Uh, but I can't imagine this will hold much viewing potential at home. I'd say if you're going to see this, if you're interested in seeing this, see it on the big screen because you can see all the little details. Or all the little pixels in, in the main character's CGI face. Yeah, so that's all I've seen lately. Uh, I still want to check out a few more things. Uh, I've heard great things about Veronica. And I really want to see A Quiet Place as well. Really looking forward to that. So come back in two weeks and I'll have a whole bunch more movies to talk about. Uh, but, but honestly, I, I don't know how anything I'm going to see is going to top Sherlock Gnomes. I mean, it's so clearly going to get the Oscars. Uh, meaning all of them. Benadryl Cambridge face must be spinning in his grave because Sherlock Gnomes is just too damn good. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Where, am I in a morgue? Like, why do I look like this? Did you like this video? Please let me know. Be sure to leave a like on it. Maybe comment down below with some movies that you might want me to check out, either on here or on my other show, Bad Movie Touch. Always looking for new suggestions from wonderful viewers like yourself. And if you want to stay updated with all my stuff, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click that little bell because YouTube thinks you should need two buttons to subscribe to somebody and actually get their videos. I can't wait for YouTube 2040 where you'll have to fill out a whole standardized test just to get your Philip DeFranco videos. Jesus. And if you really feel like helping me out, you can go check me out over on Patreon where you'll be getting access to a bunch of exclusive rewards. I'm very thankful for my patrons. You'll get your name on this end screen here too as well. And I'm setting up a whole bunch of different stuff over there. So be sure to go check that out. I really appreciate all the support. You can also check out the GoFundMe account for my movie that's coming out very soon enough. Very excited for all of you to see about it. We've got high hopes. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Eva Modem. I, I mainly just complain, so, um, well, I mean, it's the internet, so you're, prob you're probably used to that. New Bad Movie Touch coming soon. I'm also working on another video comparing Let Me In and Let the Right One In, so look forward to that. And thanks again for watching, guys. It really does mean a lot. Uh, so, till next time, I've been some guy in a chair. Bye. Even when I'm scripting these, I get sidetracked.